it's Mark with Hawkeye Ordnance. I'm here with Adam from P3 Multigun, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Adam is also on the pro staff at Vortex. Uh, so between Adam and our friends at Vortex, um, who've been incredibly supportive of us in the channel, we managed to get our hands on this year's unicorn, the uh, Vortex Strike Eagle 1 to 6 by 24. Um, we got it riding right now on uh, my JP rifle. Um, it's replacing uh, this guy, which we've all come to love, which is the Vortex Razor 1 to 6 HD. Um, I'm going to be doing a full review on this probably in the fall, but I wanted to get a full season on it because it's a lot of money, guys, and I want to make sure that my review is comprehensive before you spend the cash. But so today we're talking about this guy, which comes in uh, right around 300 to 350 bucks. We're thinking. Um, I'll, I'll verify that. And put it in the notes. Um, we put the optic on. It, it rides quite a bit further back than the. Uh, Razor does, but it seems like even at the you know the half an inch or an inch longer back here because of the different eye relief, it seems to kind of work well. So we really just swapped it out and, um, directly for the Razor. So we're gonna go sight this guy in at 50 yards and uh, see what we think. Where are we hitting? Uh, I can't see him from here. On John Low show clear, we'll go check it out. Alright. Okay, so we need to go up four over six. So one cool thing is we just found a spare battery in the uh, windage cap. Um, but I'm noticing oh no, that's cool. This is actually pretty amazing. So yeah, Adam, do you know what the, the, the turn increments are? Uh, I believe it's quarter minute. Quarter minute, right? Okay, so... I just made that up, though, so... No, I'll probably check that out. But uh, I don't want to waste a bunch of ammo. Let's go eight clicks. Long. Okay, so... Eight clicks up and eight clicks to the right. To the left. Right? I'm left-handed, so I say everything backwards. Their own little special language. Just leave those off for now, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is not over. <laughs> All right. Oh. So, just for the record, I'm still kind of a wounded pony here. I fucking took a dinger at a match on Sunday and tore up both my knees and my uh, elbows. And it's just killing me to be down here on the ground, but... Love of the game, right? Yeah, exactly. It's it's for the subs. Yeah, people want to do outlaw shit or want to be outlaw. Wait, what's your quote? People want to be outlaw until they have to do outlaw shit. Time to yeah. do outlaw shit. Everyone wants to be a YouTuber until it's time to go film. Alright. Are you uh you okay being there? Yeah. I, I've never actually killed anybody five feet to my left before, but it's a new day. Alright. Alright, here we go. So just to clear up um, kind of all the variables here, the JP-15, we're using 55 grain uh, Freedom Munitions, Reman Ammunition, at exactly 50 yards. The first group, and we'll get a close up of this, the first group here was the, the first three shots I took. We made the adjustments pretty much based intuitively from what we already know about Vortex and ended up with the next three shots right here. And then we made a couple minor adjustments and adjustments and Adam ended up with this group here. So I'm calling that sighted in at 50 yards. So Indeed, it is sighted in at 50 <laughs> yards. Yeah. So close enough for three gun, right? Obviously the, the rifle's a very nice gun, so we, we know that's not really the issue. Both of us are you know, pretty competent shooters. This is an excellent looking group of, of rounds. So uh, the gun is capable. Now I was at six power. What did you use for? Uh, the same. The same, yeah, okay. 
at this distance we want to see the target yep. as clearly as possible so yep, that makes sense so first impressions on the glass or uh you know it's it's a solid piece of glass you yep. know i mean it's it's a it has a lot of capabilities for for the sure. price point that it's at yeah That's it sure, sure does i did notice a little bit of downrange uh, a little lack of clarity downrange from the razor now obviously we're talking about four to five times more expensive, more money invested. Um, but man, it, you know, obviously it's capable and that's what we really care about. Um, so let's go, uh, let's do this. Why don't we do some up close, fast, uh, you know, acquisition stuff. Yeah, that's, and that's see how, really where you'll start to feel a yeah, scope or not, is, right? is when you start running it for what we do. I mean, so sighting it at 50 yards is probably the most exciting YouTube video you've ever seen. Absolutely. In your, in your life. And it's never been done before. Never. Um, and then maybe we'll go back to that. We've got like 75 yards on this range. Maybe we can do some offhand at AC Steel or something like right. that to end the day. Right. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. All right. See you in a minute. All right. So we're going to do some burner grills at like 10 yards, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to get the buzzer out. We'll take turns. Uh, buzzer goes off. Shoot two, shoot two. Check some splits. You know, have some fun with it. See what happens. All right, cool. Let's get Probably handle that. Yeah. You ready? Stand by. You gotta clear this one. Shoot it ready. Stand by. 1.15. What do you think? I like it. I really like the horseshoe on the top. Yeah. More than I thought I would. Okay. Um, it's, it's very intuitive when you're getting a, a flash sight picture like that. You're not really looking for anything too precise. You just right. want to know that it has an, an acceptable point value. Yep. I really like the, the horseshoe. Cool. All right, well here, let me give it a go. Stand by. Yep. One, nine, three. Try that again. I think I only have a couple left. Let's see what happens. Stand by. <laughs> well, but that was a really good split. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. It's good. I mean, I... The reticle of this, this range is really nice because it's just totally, it just wraps around the target, you just kind of pull the trigger and you're good to go. Right. Um, that's what, you know, and in a three gun scope, we're, we're trying to get a one optic to do a lot of things. That's you right. Know, we yep. need close range tools and long range tools. Agreed. And, you know, if we don't have the illumination there for a red dot, that horseshoe there is pretty handy. It is very handy. Range. I could use a little more brightness out of the... For sure. We're, for we're sure, cranked up at 11. It's a very sunny day. We do have the sun kind of at maybe 10 degrees down on us right now. So this is about as bad as it's gonna get. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I can see red. Yep. But it isn't saying, you know, hey. But yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, we have to consider the price point. No, you know, absolutely it, right. You no, know, that's that's some of what you're giving up. Yep. You know, but you know, an illuminated one to six. Yeah. You know, that's, this price is ridiculous. It's so crazy. All right, up close, it's a thumbs up for sure. So, all right, let's go do some. I uh, think we can hit that BC back from 100 yards. Yeah, let's, I think it's more like 75 back there, but let's give it a go. We'll range it. We'll range it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so before we charge that up, let's do. Um, we'll do low ready, speed. Try to hit that uh, steel down range. Now there's a. We're at exactly 100 yards right here to the backstop down there. We have an AC steel that's basically half gray, half white, like 90% of all the targets we get to see. And uh, I'll, I'll highlight that with a little circle or something. All right, so we'll do the, the what we just did. Um, just one shot though. And while it sounds like a fairly, you know, uh, normal shot or unimpressive shot, this is actually a very good test for an optic. We have an opaque target that's somewhat in a shadow, yep. or it's it backed up against a shadow. Yep. The sun's in our face. On a, on a bluebird day yep and we're gonna try and try and see it and hit it offhand so this is actually a very good test for an optic even though it on on paper it seems like a fairly unimpressive shot no uh, about that I've blown a few hundred yard offhand shots before uh, not you? that I haven't <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, this is this is a fairly reasonable shot that you should expect to see in a match yeah so. exactly so all right <clears throat> shooter ready yeah stand by low ready please low ready Stand by, gamer. Hit. Three, three, eight. Two shots. Ready? Stand by. Hit. Hit. You ready? Stand by. Oh boy. 
a lot easier on three. You know, it turns out that a little magnification helps. Really? Yep. Wow. Stand by. Jeez. That was weak sauce. I broke my first shot literally uh, like when high. The, when the crosshair wasn't on the target. <laughs> the crosshair was just a little <laughs> off the target. I got a little full of myself there. All right. Let's get that a lot. Yep. Stand by. Yeah. Stand by. Stand by. So, uh, it's really, really intuitive. Yeah. Pretty amazed. Actually, it's, it's, uh, I thought at this range that we start getting into the reticle being too thick. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, sh we'll fly in some images of the reticle so you can see what we're looking right. at, but um, it's almost like the chunkiness of it sort of helps at this range. I, I, I do like the reticle. I'm, I'm kind of a minimalist on yeah, on reticles, but you know, I'm just one guy. So if, if if I had to pick a vortex reticle, I would definitely put this one at one of my favorites. If they've come out with. I'd, I'd like to see it in a razor. Be, be quite honest. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I, I, okay. I mean, I just got. Here's the thing, guys. The guy buying this optic is going to be shooting club matches. Right. You could you could use it to reach out further, but for the most part, I think this is going to be hand to hands. Mostly of people shooting club matches, right? Mm -hmm. And if you can make hundred yard offhand shots at an AC steel, there's not a whole lot you can't do at a club level match. You're going to see 200 yard targets, but generally speaking, you're going to be supported in some way or another. Mm -hmm. You certainly got the optic for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to run this tomorrow night and see how yeah, it goes. No, there's a lot of value here for sure. Very, very cool. It's, it's definitely everything you need to be successful. I agree. All right, well, we're going to, we're going to run it hard tomorrow and uh, we'll film that and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so today we're here uh, shooting a mini three gun at uh, Forest Lake Sportsman's Club, which is quick becoming Minnesota's premier shooting venue, especially for action sports. And uh, there's a, a short match tonight. Uh, we've got the Strike Eagle running on the, on the JP again, just like we had yesterday. It's all sighted in. This is going to be the rifle stage today, so there's going to be uh, kind of on either side some quick burner paper targets, and then these AC steals offhand down here at about mm, 50 yards or so. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing how she performs. So uh, after this, we'll get together. We'll talk a bit about the about the optic and um, kind of give our final thoughts on it. So see you in a little bit. Yep. Stand by. All right, guys. So we we got this a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam was nice enough to come out with me and sight the gun in. That was actually pretty quick and pretty easy. I found it to be super intuitive. Um, then what did we do? We did some quick drills with it. Yep. And test drive. I think you know my first impression of this um, the Strike Eagle when I got it was that I wasn't sold by any stretch of the imagination. I was kind of like. I don't know. You know, I'm really blessed to have the their Razor, which is amazing optic, and the Viper, which I had before. And, and unfortunately, it's going to get compared, and we're going to do that in a minute. But um, my, I, I didn't want to like it. I don't think when I got when I first saw it. And then we got out and shot with it, and it was it, it exceeded my expectations, and then some. So I don't know how you felt about it your first uh, time. I'm kind of the same way. I mean, the what we got on film isn't my first impression of it. You know, I I'd had seen it before. Yeah. Um, behind the scenes before it was released and and I was expecting to be disappointed I, I really was because you got to look at the price point you got to consider who they're targeting at that price point yeah and it's not me nope. you know um, so uh, but I, I was pleasantly surprised in, in the limited amount of time I've actually shot one which which you've seen on camera yeah I mean it is a more than adequate scope it gives you what you need yeah. it gives you a good a good clean sight picture it's got a reticle that you can use without I thought being, the reticle would be great once without I being it, too yeah. busy Absolutely. and yeah I mean it, it is a lot of scope for for the dough for the dough yeah so um, I also got a chance to shoot it in competition tonight 
and under pressure I struggled with a little bit of the clarity uh, we had you, you know you'll see the footage if you've already, you've already seen the footage I guess at this point but the there was a lot of shadows a lot of bright a lot of dark and then I was kind of stressed out and my glasses were a little foggy and just you know the whole thing I struggled a little bit I took way more pokes at those 50 yard off hands uh, than I needed to but then the close range stuff it just burned it was mm -hmm. great um, I would you know I'd, I'd highly recommend it I, I really like the reticle I mean, I, I'm not yeah, I, I would like to see that reticle or something like it in, in a razor. So, we've done a day at the range with Adam and I where we sighted in on this gun and, uh, and then we did some drills and then I took it out and shot it at a match and now we put it on Blair's rifle for the Kirkwold uh, 3 gun and now the Strike Eagle's riding on your little guy. So tell us a bit, I think, first about your experience with it being that we're still at that match that's fresh. Yeah, it was, it's a uh, 1 to 6 by 24, second focal plane scope. Um, Right out of the box, you know, it's it's well made. Obviously, it's it's a vortex, so there's no worries there. Um, the biggest thing that differs from this than from some of the other scopes, like the Viper or uh, going to the Razor, is that it's it's got a much larger reticle. You know, it's it's kind of a hybrid dot and a donut with a BDC built in the middle of it. Um, it's a little busy for me at first. It took me a little bit of shooting to get used to it at distance. It's close up. It's awesome because it's this big thing right in front of you. You got both eyes open. You know, anything within 50 yards, you could just both eyes open, point at it, squeeze your trigger, and move. Um, some of the more precision stuff on like six inch HF plates and distance. It just took me a little bit to get used to it. But once I got used to it, um, just because it was a different reticle and I had to kind of focus on where I wanted to be, man, it was perfect. It was right on. Um, it's It's got good glass. It's it's uh, it's on par with some of the nicer scopes out there. Um, it's, it's not a razor and it wasn't intended to be, but uh, I really like this thing. Um, this is a rifle I just built for one of my kids. And I think that was the, one of its strongest suits is at its price point. Yeah. It's the nicest optic that is available out there for our type of game. Um, you know, and I would say for like guys that do a lot of varmint shooting, coyotes and stuff, it would it would cross over to that really well uh, cool. as well. But uh, my son really likes this thing. Um, he's shot uh, some of my other optics, you know, and he, he was kind of warmish to them, but he really, really likes this thing. It's, it's a big in-your-face reticle. Uh, it's easy for him to understand. It's easy to focus on, easy to shoot. Uh, it's got we had with 11 brightness uh, levels on this thing, so you can really tune it in where you want it to be. Um, it's not overly heavy, so it's not adding a lot of weight to your weapon. Yeah. Um, once we got our zeroed in, I mean, this thing really sang. So, you know, if, you, if you're on an extreme budget, this can just go for it. Um, you know, or if you're looking for an optic for a secondary rifle to keep around, great. But uh, for me, and I think it could be for a lot of other people, is you know, guys my age or kids are getting older and they're starting to come into three gun. This is the perfect optic to get your kids into three gun. Um, you're not breaking the bank to put something like this on a rifle, so they have their own rifle that's suited to them and with their style of shooting. They can set it up the way they like it. You know, because obviously not a lot of people can run out and just start putting top shelf glass on several weapons, you know, and if you got kids, I've got two of mine that are shooting already. So, you know, this is a perfect platform for that. It, cool. it works really well. So, you like the glass? Yeah. I think you like the glass. Yeah, yep. If we, you know, we always gotta throw in the caveat of the price point. Well, let's, let's do this real quick. Before we get into, because I want to talk about this against the Viper and the Razor that we have here, right? Um, but I want to do that. Let's give it a fair shake before yep. we, we, we cut it into all that. So, right. but I, I did like the glass. I, I, I saw it early on. Um, I, was, I was really expecting to be disappointed, right? Because because most scopes, 300 bucks are disappointing. It's just kind of the reality of it. But, 
Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. When we actually shot it, I was very surprised with uh, the capabilities of it and, and how it actually was when you could look at it outside of a retail environment and yep. got it got it into the wild. Yep. It, it's a it's a really legitimate scope. And, uh, I, I think Blair also raised uh, an interesting point about hunting. You know, a lot of people come in predisposed to a two and a half to ten or a three to nine for a hunting application, yep. and, and while uh, one to six really was developed in the tactical and competition market, it's it's a pretty legitimate scope. It makes a hell of a lot of sense for, here for hunting up here. Yeah, in the northern yeah where, where I'm from in northern Iowa, northeastern Iowa, we get you know a very hilly, wooded terrain, you know, and uh, you know I've I've got some some friends of mine that are you know avid coyote hunters, and they they're chomping at the bit to look at this thing, right? Because a lot of their shots are maybe within 200 yards, and it's fast moving, you know, and it's not a lot of super open country where you can take your time and yeah. and really dial down with with a with a high power optic. But um, yeah, I was I was impressed the, for the price point. I, I was really expecting much less of an optic, but but the glass has really got some uh, some nice clarity to it. We've uh, I personally have shot it through a couple different uh, environments. We had a really bright day yesterday. We've had a really overcast, uh, windy day today, and. You know, it's it's still clear all the way through. I mean, we're not pushing out to you know 300 yards and beyond, but you know we've been shooting some fairly long stuff, and I've, I've been impressed. I mean, yeah. for for the price point, it is it is fantastic. Now, you know, if you wanted to step up a few dollars and go to the Viper, um, before we go there, I still want to cut in and talk a little bit about my match day with this thing. So, my I I loved it on the. I mean, it was 100%. I couldn't believe how good it was on the day we had the pure sun sky out at uh, Horse and Hunt. We sighted it in, we ran some drills. Yep. It was shocking how well it performed. And then we came in here and did a night match where it was nice when we started and it ended at kind of twilighty. And the first two stages, again, performed beautifully. My only issue with this scope was, is that when it started, the sun started coming back behind this berm that's behind us here, and the targets were up here. So I'm in the sun way down there, and the targets were back here. That's when I missed my razor for the first time shooting yeah. a scope. I just didn't have the separation that I was normally used to seeing. So that would be my shortfall with the glass. The reticle is actually pretty damn cool. I thought I'd hate it, but I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it's... And I think we agreed, that, I mean, we, you and I agreed that in the full daylight, that maybe the, op, the, the, the illumination was a little, could have been a little stronger. Yeah. But we're picking, at, we're nitpicking. Yeah, right? yeah. that's yeah. not, it is nitpicking, but it's not a maybe. It's, it's, not daylight bright. It isn't as daylight bright as for, as for what like people want daylight. Yeah, bright yesterday I shot it on full power 11 yep. setting, you know, for any of the stuff that I was doing okay. because you needed that even if you step down to 10. Yeah, I so mean, it's, it, it's 11 or zero essentially. <laughs> yeah. you know, full daylight it is. <laughs> right. um, but today, you know, it's a little overcast. You know, I ran it at night. Okay, all right. So again, it's kind of like you're going to run the top range or nothing. It's pretty much what it is. So. Okay. Not that I really do anything different with my razor either. No, I don't think that's a valid the, point. The lower settings are more for those low light hunting tactical applications than they are for daylight brightness. Yeah, but I want, I want, what if one way I want? What if it's like Mercury? You can keep asking. <laughs> yeah, you can keep asking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Viper so Ruben, so Mark wants a special reticle that's just for him. Just for me, exactly. Like super bright. All right, so so let's take, take a step back now. Basically, I think everybody here, and certainly at the price point, is saying, this is an awesome option. It's a super win. Okay. And now, let's let's go a little further into this and talk about it versus the Viper and the Razor. Okay, because those are $500 roughly for the Viper 1 to 4 and $1,200 or so retail for the Razor 1 to 6. Okay. So, let's just go down the line and do this. If you were, you know, if you had your druthers, right? Um, and obviously money is an option, so we're going to have to leave that caveat in there. Right, money is an option. What are you thinking about the three, the three uh, pitches of glass we have? Well, you know, I have a razor and I love it, and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. I mean, okay. if, if I could just go out and pick one off, you know, see for me. You're not bummed you bought the razor. No, not at all, not at all. And but, and the, <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, I'm not going to run out and buy another razor to put on my kid's rifle or no. backup rifle. Yeah. Um, I That's have, another I have, good thing is an excellent backup rifle uh, optic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I haven't had a lot of trigger time with the Viper, but honestly, for me, um, I would just buy this. Okay. You know, it'd be this or the Razor. You know, I know I'm going to both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you go all the way into the to the top end, you're not going to regret it. I mean, you're going to have top shelf 
optics, the clarity, the light gathering, everything's there that you want, you know. Um, but I personally, myself, I don't see that much discrepancy between this and going to the Viper. And, and, the, and, the, and the reticle really sells this model. Oh, for, for you, me. okay, cool. I mean, I, for, for me, if, it's, if you're asking, Strike Eagle or Razor, I'm gonna go Razor. Yeah. Strike Eagle or a Viper, I'm gonna go a Viper. Yeah. Uh, the scope is uh, the only chance of visually perceiving the target. That's, it's, it's too in hang Vortex is the force of optics. It is your perception of the target. So I'm gonna get the brightest, the sharpest glass that I can get a hold of. And if I had to choose between one to six, um, you know, uh, Strike Eagle glass or one to four Viper glass, I, I would probably choose the Viper. And uh, it's, it's just unfortunate that there's nothing in between these in the space that that, that scope gets compared to this scope. Because they're really not the same thing. They are. Really, no. So, so um, you know, there's there's plenty of room in the space for, for a Viper one to six. You know, I, I'd really like to see that happen. Yeah. We, we definitely float that out there to our friends as much as we can. Um, but no, it's 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 unfortunate because it's a really cool scope for what they what they tried to do in that price point, and it's it's just not fair to compare it to this. No, I get that. So, no. so my my thoughts on the thing, and I've run all three now, as much or more than anybody standing here. And obviously, if one can afford this, this is the best choice out here. Okay, so it's not fair to this because they are not the same scope. However, I really am amazed by this. This guy shocked me to death. I, I think it's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna say though is, is I'm gonna take a little departure from you guys. If I'm shooting in Minnesota where we never get past 200 meters at, at, at a match, I'm thinking the, 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 the Viper wins all day long. I, I would just spend the extra 100 bucks and get the better glass, right? Having said that, if I'm living in Arizona or in North Texas where shots are gonna be three, four, 500 meters on a regular basis, I'm going right there every time because then I have that extra capability, which, and, and the fact they pulled off one to six under four dollars is just insane. It was unheard of. It didn't, didn't even I'll, exist as a possibility several years ago. So um, I hope we've put together something that was in depth, guys, and that it covers both, you know, some of the Vortex line, um, but more importantly, the Strike Eagle, so you can make a good decision. You will not be bummed about having this. And at this price point, hell, you could transition to an upper level. Uh, scope the next year and be stoked to have it and so if you're gonna dip your toes into the game I think everybody says this is freaking awesome you got kids freaking awesome backup rifle freaking awesome and, and frankly you know I I don't think you go wrong at all with it whatsoever so not at all it's, all right it's, a, it's an amazing piece of glass cool well guys thank you so much as always for watching uh, check out HawkeyeOrdnance.com uh, HawkeyeOrdnance on Facebook and all that good stuff and of course go over to Vortex Optics and check out the new Strike Eagle the Viper and the Razor if you get a chance. Thanks so much and God bless.